Hello. Glad you could make it. I'm glad you could come to the rock show. This here is a presentation on fluorescent minerals. I don't have a PhD or anything like that. Just a normal individual like you guys that collect rocks and along the way. Mine's a little more fascination with fluorescence than a lot of the other group members. Okay, they're nature's beauty. That's they really are. Here's some of the examples, different colors along the way. Along with the, the picture is the explanation of roughly what colors each individual rocks are. I tried to make it very knowledgeable for you guys to understand and there's the layman's terms are real simple and I'm not going to talk in documentary large names okay first of all I can't say I'm half of them as it is okay fluorescent minerals were formed millions of years ago uh, covered in seawaters and basically geysers were the most of them and what happened is, is 10 miles underneath the earth the pressure built it up and as it came through it collected little bits of pieces along the way, along the way, and uh, went ahead and solidified on the earth, on the top of the earth. So, over a period of time, then minerals, uh, plant material, clays, and other things went ahead and covered over top. Basically, how fluorescence works is that the proton strikes the mineral. Basically, what happens is it. It hits it, the inside of it then, the electron decides to go, hey, I want out of here. So out it comes. And long story short, that's how we get the fluorescence the way it is on the minerals. There are over 500 minerals. But the problem is that we can only see only about 15% of them by visual eye. That along the way there's many other things that are that are involved into it so the purities such as that activators in other words it's like adding something to some to yeast to bread to make it grow you end up with or, you know that way there with flour okay uh, some of the activators are lead copper tungsten boron titanium and a few other minerals so there's also one other kind of minerals that are called quenchers these are minerals such as iron and alabite and sapphire that uh, are just act just the opposite. They they bring it down instead of making it go up. There are four ways of the minerals can fluoresce: it. light, self-activated, heat, and friction. Light. There are four, three different types of light that are involved in making minerals fluorescent. UVA. That is the normal light from 320 to 400. Most of the light flashlights that you guys can buy or purchase online are anywhere from 365 on up to 400. And I'll get into a little bit more of that along the way. UVB are medium wave lights. These are from 290 to 320. The ideal is around 312, but it can vary from mineral to mineral. And UVC is short wave. This is from 200 to 290. These go from, uh, ideal is 254. Why industry has picked 254? I have no reason why that certain one. Okay, the meaning of NM, this is the nanometers of wavelengths of the electrical frequency. In other words, basically your lights, any of these lights whatsoever, whether it be this style, electronic, or plugged in, or whatever, is, is, generates an actual wavelength. And it depends on where on the wavelength gets you your colors. As you can see, UEC is, is over here, and as you work down, you get into the green. The green that you see is 500, and your red spotter lights that used to play with cats, 
and everything else is 700. Then it gets down beyond that, and then it's no longer visible from the scale of from 200 down and 700 up. Caution safety is the biggest thing I can say to anyone about UV lights. UV lights emit UV rays and you really need to use eye protection. Uh, skin covering is not necessary. UV lights are generally the black lights like you have for light up posters and that kind of stuff. UVB, they're more harmful. Uh, you definitely, definitely need uh, eye protection for that. Um, and, and also have your skin covered up. Most of the time it's for medical purposes. And I'll get a little bit more into that. UVC is lighting extreme. Uh, you definitely need eye protection. Uh, any skin exposed will do dark harm and you definitely don't want that. Examples of the lights in everyday usage. UVAs are lights that are used for posters. Lighting up scorpions, which I did not know scorpions lit up. When it's lit. <laughs> Detect the antifreeze. It will identify some gemstones. About a fourth of the diamonds will light up also, which is kind of cool. Passports, bank notes, and other things along the way. Uh, of course, like spots on bananas, which I didn't know either on that one. UVB. Lights are used for reptiles to keep them warm, give them vitamin D. Babies with yellow jaundice. That's where they helps them out. Skin diseases, that's rashes, skin rashes, and whatever along the way. The heat we feel is from UVB. UVC is for used on sterilites or sterilization of water, purification of air, and also used in the food to kill bacteria. That gives a little bit about UV lights. Long wave lights are used at nighttime, uh, of course, for scorpions. This here is a general chart of all the different minerals that are out there that will glow under long wave lights. Now, I will get a little bit more into the detail of even that because you can go ahead and get a long wave wave light at 365. The problem is not all rocks will glow at 365. Some will glow, glow at 400, 395, 385, and so on and so forth. So when you buy a light, you've got to be kind of a little bit specific what you want it for. You can get the generalization, which is 365. That gets the broad spectrum of all of them. One's uperlite, uh, or sodiolite is uh, what is now the big factor up north uh, as far as how they glow and everything else. Um, you know, and they, I have one here, it looks just like a general rock, but you go ahead and, and uh, hit it with, you, hold it up? you can see it glow. Willamite, appetite. The top row is what it looks like under normal light when you hit it with long wave. Look at the difference. The same with this. Short wave. Here's a general list of what short wave will light up. As you'll notice that a lot of the names uh, that are on the long wave will also be on the short wave. Actually, long story short, there's more short wave minerals than there is long wave minerals. Though, on the flip side of the coin, access for us to see in the general spectrum is long wave. With short wave, again, top is what it is normal when it's lit up. Okay, examples of short wave and long wave. Top picture, middle, bottom. Normal light, long wave, short wave. Look at the difference in colors. It can be very 
deceiving what you're looking at. A few other examples of soda. Photosensis. Oh, this is one that kills me. Photosensis. Thank you. <laughs> I told you I'm not a doctor in this mess. It's a process of the minerals being shined on light. Okay, basically the protons, neutrons start banging together and they're going to give off a glow. It can last from a few seconds to almost a minute, a little over a minute. It depends on how intense the light is on a certain mineral. Examples are calcite, spirite, calcinite, fluoride, bulimite. Self-activated ones. These are ones that uh, don't need no interference from anything. And they will glow, believe it or not. And uh, a few examples are powellite, beninite, crucite. These are normal ones you don't normally see. And of course some of the uranium minerals. And again, you don't want to be around uranium just for fun. Thermalescence or heat. These are ones that are heated up. Minerals that are heated up to 50 uh, degrees Celsius or 112 degrees Fahrenheit to 392 degrees Fahrenheit. Ones like that that you basically put in, in, in an oven, basically in a scientific oven, are ones like uh, fluorite, calcite, uh, and some feldspars. Turbulescence. These are ones that are actually friction. This is one you strike two together, believe it or not. All the problem is, it's only for a split second. It's not something that's going to be there for a long period of time. Examples of those. There is some calcite, feldspars, quartz, and a few other ones that will do that. But again, it's almost uh, time sensitive uh, by filming is the only way you can really find them. Back from history. Back in the medieval times, they thought mega, mega. Oh, I'm gonna do it again. Mega Noah. Mega. Mega Noah. Thank you. Mega Noah uh, was used to cure blood of disorders. Now, what Magna Olam? Looks like this. The thing of it is, they figured it would kill all the cures along the way. But long story short, it was killing them. And today, myst uh, mystical practitioners still use it to, to go ahead and be calm, cool, stress relief. Here's some more materials. With light, without light, and light. Okay, locations across, for essence, across minerals or across uh, the world. As you can see, we have the uh, Franklin Mine, the Sterling Mine in New Jersey and California. Uh, the Salt Sea, I have a typographical layer. It should be Sterling Hill Mine, New Jersey. I just have to see that. I apologize. Uh, they're also in Canada, England, Greenland. In a places. The Franklin Mine and the Sterling Mine are the two mines that are called the capital of the fluorescence of the world. These mines have more than a hundred types of minerals that are available. The Franklin Mine was 1700 to 1954. Sterling Mine in New Jersey was from 1848 to 1940 or 86. Here's a picture of the, of the Franklin mine. Here's some of the products that they produce out of their mine. Yes, they do have tours on that mine. Thank you. I was asking that. They also have tour, tours at the Sterling mine. And I'll, I'll get you a few more pictures here in a little bit. You'll see why and where. Here's an, uh, a zinc ore from the Sterling mine. That's how they used to go ahead and sort the rocks.
from the, the ores that they needed from other ores. So that's the reason why how fluorescence got started to begin with. You know, it was something that was scientifically designed for manufacturing. Well then lo and behold, us normal individuals like it too, you know. Here's a, a picture of the sterling mine. Unfortunately, this one, one is flooded, but look at the different colors that are up on the sides. Yeah, now that one you can go see, that, this one here. The Rainbow Tunnel. This is beautiful. It's, it's gorgeous. It's unbelievable. Uh, pictures just don't do it. You need to go see it if you get a chance. <coughs> okay, now we're getting into the lights that, to purchase. You can get all different types of lights along the way, from pen lights to small pocket lights to bigger ones to, to even bigger yet to electronic ones that you plug in the wall. Short wave can only be generated by electricity, so battery operated style is out. So long wave is your best resource and availability to have. As you can see with the cost range on some of them, if you get the large lights, you can spend up to, to $5,800. That's a chunk of change. You know? The ones you want to stay away from are these ones right here. I highly recommend not, repeat, do not get these. They are not worth the money. They fall apart to begin with, and also they're very, very poor quality. What are which ones are those in here? That would be the four watt fluorescent run, the one that's recommended, uh, okay. not recommended. Like what I was telling you earlier. The, the NM nanometers, you can get them in different frequencies. And I have 372, 365, 395, 400, just in flashlights. Uh, when you see the word black light, pay attention to what the nanometers on it. Because you can go to Harbor Freight and get a black light, but you don't know what they don't tell you what nanometers it is uh, along the way. Okay, I don't know. Can you turn the lights off behind you there, sir? Sure. That'll work. Um. That'd be cool. All right. Basically, bottom line, when I tell you about wearing safety protection, <coughs> I really mean it. Because what happens is, you go ahead and you're looking around and everything else out of the deal, and you pick up the flashlight, and the next thing you know, you go, oh, wow, guess what? You got it shined in your eyes. That is, a, I've done it myself, so I know it's common. What kind of safety glasses? Pardon? What kind of glasses do you recommend? Uh, any of them that are UV rated. You can buy shop safety glasses along the way. You can go and buy them on the internet. Uh, but pay attention. Get a rectum uh, company. Don't get the China companies. Uh, you don't know what the actual lights uh, glasses are going to be. <laughs> Getting back to the the, the Uper light. But see the difference in, in difference from one to the other. Compared to 
one acre and one larger. Yep. Yeah. And, and that's the thing, with the different frequencies, you're going to get different colors. Now, where is that one found? What kind of rock is that? Uh, that is opalite. Is that found here in Michigan? No. Where did it come from? Uh... I want to say Nevada. Okay. The thing of it is, is this is crystal clear when it's normal. That's calcite. Now, hackamite. This. Nice, pretty, pretty orange out of the deal. <laughs> now, I was playing with this one earlier. This is actually almost crystal clear, but with the light hitting on it, Now, this is my favorite one. You're so cool. Oh. That's also probably was the thoughts of your blood disorders. Okay. Now, with that in mind, how far I can go with this? You got it. This one has long wave and short wave on. And as you can see, it's not quite as intense on this for the simple reason is, is that black lights have a life expectancy on them. They don't, don't last forever. Over a period of time, they dissipate over usage. Now that's short wave. You can barely see it at all. As far as everything else up here, short wave ain't too much along the way. Except for when you get from the Franklin mine. When you get from the Franklin mine, this is what you get. And if you try to hit it with a long wave, you will not get nothing whatsoever. I opened up the box, I had a long wave light, I hit it with it, and I'm going. Oh, I got disappointed really quick, and I couldn't understand why. And well, then it dawned on me. I said, short wave. And lo and behold. Well, what's the name of that mineral? This, the, the green is Willemite. But it does not glow in long wave. But, uh, That pretty much ends the presentation. Um, is there any questions? You can turn the lights on, sir. Thank you. I hope this was at least a little bit of informative for you guys to understand what's going on.